Good evening. I'm Philip Ivans. I'm a equine internal medicine specialist working in Northamptonshire with a interest in equine infectious disease. And this evening I'm going to be talking about the case for equine herpes uh, vaccination. The discussion around EHV vaccination is um, more complicated and more nuanced than for equine influenza and uh, equine tetanus, which we commonly vaccinate for and have um, for many years. EHV vaccination is not new. Um, the debate and the evidence around them has evolved over time and hopefully we'll be able to cover that in the next five, 10 minutes and inform you what we can expect from EHV vaccination and which groups of horses potentially would benefit from EHV vaccination. So the disease that we uh, as horse owners, as Bethany said, is worried about the most regarding equine herpes is the rare of the four diseases, uh, the neurologic form, equine herpes myelencephalopathy. And it's worth stating at the very beginning, there is no direct protection or license, i.e. Um, what the uh, vaccine has been uh, proven against, against the neurologic form. Um, and so what we're achieving through EHV vaccination is not protection against neurologic form with the current vaccine. And obviously as a research goal, hopefully one day we will have a vaccine that will directly uh, protect horses against neurologic form but what we're expecting from the current EHV vaccine uh, is um, something slightly different. And also we have to use vaccination carefully around active outbreak of EHV, which I will uh, touch upon towards the end of the uh, discussion. So what can EHV vaccination achieve? Um, it reduces shedding of the virus from, horse, from the horse's nose. And uh, anyone who saw the disease of the, disease, disease of the day um, discussion earlier today will know that most horses see this virus when they're very young and they carry this virus latently, i.e. in normal horses, around for the majority of their life. And at times of stress, and that could be transportation to an event, it could be um, increase in training, uh, it could be injury of other kinds, can cause the horse to spontaneously shed virus, even if uh, the horse is externally well. And this virus then goes on to affect other horses. And so we know that the current EHV vaccinations result in less virus being shed. So we get a decrease in uh, nasal shedding. And consequently, we get less virus in the environment. And therefore, hopefully, the less virus for horses to pick up as a group. And therefore, we're going to see a reduction in EHV outbreaks. And if we combine this with good biosecurity, um, uh, in tandem with vaccination, uh, we, sh we will um, uh, definitely decrease the number of VHV outbreaks and therefore consequently uh, decrease the rare event of a neurologic outbreak. The reduction of the severity of clinical signs of respiratory disease. Um, EHV respiratory disease tends not to be, uh, in most horses, uh, very severe, uh, but you can get complications associated with it due to secondary bacterial infection. And uh, even in less severe forms, you get an associated loss of work and performance, which in uh, sports horses uh, can uh, incur a financial loss associated with this loss of work. So by vaccinating, you will have less days off. Uh, and if you do get EHV and respiratory disease, you will uh, get, quicker, get better quicker. A uh, very akin to uh, COVID vaccination currently in humans. And for brood mares, and some sports horses will have competing horses in the round uh, breeding stock or uh, close to breeding stock, breeding stock, and obviously appropriate biosecurity measures should be undertaken. But there is uh, protection from the risk of abortion uh, through EHV uh, vaccination. So, what vaccines are available in the UK? Currently, there is uh, one equipped EHV one uh, and four, the two viruses. Uh, that we're concerned about, and the primary course can occur from any uh, age post the five months of age, and there's two injections four to six weeks apart, so that's two injections four to six weeks apart, um, and the booster uh, is then given every six months. And you can give um, the HV uh, at the same time as doing your influenza vaccines and tetanus vaccines. Uh, at the moment in the UK, there's no licensed combination product, um, but around the world, and um, potentially in the future, there may be a combination product that will be licensed within the UK. 
pregnant mares will be vaccinated at five, seven, and nine months of pregnancy. So which horses do we think would benefit the most from EHV vaccination? So the younger you are, the more likely you are to be stressed, so immunologically uh, less mature, so slightly more naive, and therefore more likely to shed virus and be a risk to others. So vaccinating horses less than five years of age uh, will have a very positive effect for the rest of the herd. And obviously for those individual horses, it will reduce the severity of respiratory disease and make them get better quicker if they do uh, encounter uh, EHV. Obviously with the decreased risk of abortion, horses are breeding studs and have done for many years since the late 70s, uh, vaccinated against EHV um, and any um, other animals uh, that are in contact with pregnant mares should be vaccinated to protect those pregnant mares. Horses housed at facilities with frequent equine movement on and off the premises. So uh, as we said, transportation can be a risk factor for EHV shedding. Mixing of horses we know is a risk factor for um, enhancing transmission of respiratory infection disease. And so it makes very good sense to uh, have this added protection along with other biosecurity measures of EHV vaccination in this group. And lastly, and very importantly um, for sports horses, venues where equestrian sports systems take place. So you've got horses mixing from often different geographical areas and um, at the higher levels international, uh, so global mixing of horses, and therefore uh, these horses are often quite stressed and therefore the risk of EHV uh, tends to be higher. And as we saw uh, last year, uh, down in the Iberian Peninsula and the neurologic outbreak there, um, that uh, it is always a risk for um, potential um, equestrian events and therefore vaccinating the horses going on to those events makes a huge amount of sense. So reducing the amount of EHV uh, in the environment. So the vaccination of equine herpes myelin capillopathy as touched upon in the beginning of the uh, discussion, uh, there is no uh, efficacy against uh, neurologic form from the current vaccinations, and partly because the, our understanding, so the pathogenesis of how the disease uh, is caused is poorly characterized despite huge amounts of uh, research. And there uh, were some historic increased risks associated with EHM with vaccination. Um, back in uh, 2007, Henniger, et al, and Trau uh, in 2013. And this is partly because um, the risk of developing disease was higher uh, in older horses, um, but also um, uh, you were more likely to have vaccinations, more vaccinations the older you were. So once we're corrected for that, there was no increased risk uh, for EHM in, in uh, in these studies historically. And so the role of vaccination as a risk factor for neurologic disease remains uncertain. Um, however, uh, looking on the evidence that's currently available, uh, we think it is unlikely to be an increased risk if vaccinated uh, well ahead of uh, a potential outbreak. And as I said, potentially decreases the number of neurologic outbreaks by decreasing the amount of virus in the environment. But just to reiterate, the current vaccines do not have a license claim against neurologic disease and only decrease the amount of nasal shedding from healthy horses. So can we vaccinate in face of an EHM outbreak? Vaccinating horses in an active outbreak of EHM is not advised in most cases, uh, partly because we are uncertain of the exact pathogenesis of neuro neurologic form, in other words, how the disease is caused and potentially because it interferes with serological screening of in-contact. Um, and this vaccine doesn't allow us to differentiate uh, horses that are vaccinated from horses that are um, um, infected in the field. Vaccinations may be advisable for non-contact outside the immediate geographical location of the outbreak, because uh, they reduce long-term EHV shedding and improve herd immunity. They also increase the owner awareness of EHV that accompanies these outbreaks, and. Uh, can be used to encourage uh, proactive vaccination and also, I think, uh, just concentrate people's minds on improved biosecurity. So to conclude, EHV vaccination is a little bit more complicated 
than uh, equine influenza and uh, equine tetanus, which we currently uh, routinely vaccinate for. But it does decrease at a herd level uh, the amount of virus in the environment. So um, rather than vaccinating a couple of horses on the yard, vaccinating all the horses within your herd, i.e. your yard, will be beneficial. And vaccinating those four groups that we mentioned um, a couple of slides ago, the horses under five, the breeding stock and any horses that are in contact with breeding stock, the horses that are uh, mixing, so um, lots of movement on and off the premises, and also those horses that are um, competing uh, or will all benefit from EHV uh, vaccination by decreasing the amount of virus in the environment at these more stressful times. Thank you very much.